coming up on Texas Parks and Wildlife. It's a pretty interesting river that gives you a lot of the city, but yet it gives you an opportunity to experience kind of a natural world. It's really not about getting from here to there. It's about enjoying and taking in whatever kind of wildlife or nature you can along the way. The cypress trees and the Spanish moss, kind of an ethereal feel to it. Texas Parks and Wildlife, a television series for all outdoors. Hello, I'm Robert Ramirez. I work in outreach and education for Texas Parks and Wildlife. Paddling is one of the fastest growing outdoor activities in the country. And in Texas, we have hundreds of miles of paddling trails. So pretty out here. These designated routes offer public access to bays, rivers, bayou backwaters, and everything in between. This week, we'll visit some of the best paddling spots in the state. Enjoy. It's a great place to paddle. It's absolutely beautiful. It is a great surprise to me that you're able to do this 10 minutes from where I live. Kayaking in the state of Texas has exploded, and so we've tagged on to that. All right! <laughs> Kayaking and canoeing are more popular than ever. And now here in Texas, there's a push for more and more paddling trails. We're trying to develop a large inventory of paddling trails with lots of different venues so that we can reach a wide audience with a healthy outdoor experience. And this is just the Birch Creek. Birch Creek State Park boat ramp. Boat ramp. Yes, sir. Ron Smith We're from the paddling there. planning team. And you got wildlife viewing. Is here as Lake Somerville State Park looks to open up their own paddling trail. Part of the process for today is that we're gonna be looking at the initial survey. And so we're gonna get our initial GPS and GIS information. Bathrooms. On site. Evaluate the put-ins and the takeouts. Look at the aids to navigation and the hazards to navigation. One concern on the lake is an invasive aquatic plant called hydrilla that could make paddling pretty tough. Well, what we're gonna mention about this spot is that there is a fairly heavy hydrilla population here in this area, so we'll have to make sure that people are aware. It's part of what's here and part of the paddling trail adventure. Each paddling trail adventure starts at a public put-in with easy access, and signs provide trip details. Let's go easy, easy. In Houston, the Buffalo Bayou paddling trail meanders right through the heart of the city. We need to go left here a little bit. Bob Arthur is a river rat from way back. I think I missed everything. He's been paddling this <laughs> bayou for 30 years now. It's, I think, still the longest paddle trail in the state. Uh, 26 miles and all of it within the, the city limits of, of Houston, Texas. Oh, there's a log here. It's more natural than what I thought, let, let me say it that way. It's more natural than what I expected, you know, so you really feel like, you know, you're in the middle of nowhere. It's close. Just uh, get in and, and go. You spend two or three hours in nature. If you listen, it's just quiet. You can't hear anything but uh, what's supposed to be here. Uh -huh. The first official Texas paddling trail was Lighthouse Lakes, established in 1999 down along the coast at Aransas Pass. Well, what we have is an endless maze of creeks and lakes. Dean Thomas is a local guide who's been paddling these coastal channels since the trails opened up. I bought me a kayak, started fishing about the same time these trails were developed, started exploring out here, and then got the idea that I could guide people into these areas. 
it's very secluded, it's very peaceful. Um, a lot of these lakes are kayak only. It's just so shallow and so rocky in a lot of places. The only way to get through is a kayak. The trail is actually a series of four loops. They range from one to seven miles in length. The Lighthouse Lakes trails are marked with trail markers, and with moderate paddling, you can do a very adventurous trip. There's sightseeing at the historic lighthouse. All the paddling trails that you could launch from the road lead out here to the lighthouse. Sight in some colorful coastal birds. We have every species on the coast. Or you can sight cast for some trophy redfish. The red fishing is world class in this area. Um, we have anglers traveling from all over the country. How you like that? It's about 23, 24 incher. Nice little red from Lighthouse Lakes. Fishing here might be world class, but the silence and solitude is the true draw. Once people come out and they spend a day in their kayak, they realize there's a whole lot more to it than just fishing. There's many days when I'm out here and I will sit back and put the rod in the holder and just enjoy the beauty of the place. Back on Lake Somerville, Ron and the site survey team have finally made their way to the highlight of the trip, the lake's main tributary, Yewa Creek. How long do y'all propose this trail will be? From our put-in spot to where the creek flows into the lake. It's about six miles. That's a nice link for one of our trails. It is. What's really nice about the Yewa Creek this time of year is with all the hardwoods we have on the banks, it drops all the leaves in the fall. And just, you can see they're just all floating right here, all those autumn colors. I think people are gonna be pleasantly surprised at this stretch of the Yewa Creek. The habitat is pretty pristine. Um, we have a lot of bottomland hardwood forests. They're just really beautiful, and people are going to like it. It's a very unique venue for paddling, and, and that's our goal, is to create as many trails with as much uniqueness as we can throughout the state. Truly unique and one of the jewels of the paddling trail system is the Upper Guadalupe River between San Antonio and Austin. This section of the Guadalupe River is very peaceful. You don't see a lot of development along here. I think we're the first ones on the river today. You just hear birds and the sound of your paddle going through the water. Margaret Stambaugh, her kids, and friend Cliff Gossett get their paddles wet here on the Guadalupe every chance they get. This particular stretch of this river is one of those stretches that you can use it as a starter, and uh, when you get really good, you can still enjoy it. <laughs> and that's why I still enjoy it, because it's close, it's clean, it's clear. Wazooka! And the kids just love it. Woohoo! <laughs> I personally like rivers with white water on them. It's just more fun for me. And so I do like the Guadalupe because it's close to Austin, and yet it has some fun stretches to, to challenge you a bit, but not too much. Good job, buddy. Uh -huh. You got to go through that hole. Okay. It will test Whoa. you to get through it clean. Right down this tube. Right here. And that's something that the kids that don't have this opportunity will never know. Yeah, we're good. This new push for paddling trails gets folks out on the water and respects the nearby landowners at the same time. So much of the river along the banks is private property and it can be very tricky finding places to get in and out. So I think it's wonderful that there's some established places. The rivers are owned by the people and what the public access does, it allows you to come down, it's public, you can stay, you can uh, come and go as you please, and any time you please. And the river is yours.
everyone's very familiar with the Riverwalk in town, and that's very nice. It has restaurants and hotels, and very good for tourism. But this is also another section of the river. It's the very same river, but a much, much different setting, a much more natural setting. We couldn't have asked for a better day to be on the river. Sun's not shining, a little overcast, not as hot, wonderful. The Mission Reach Trail includes eight miles of paddling trails as well as 15 miles of hiking and biking trails. It's a pretty interesting river that gives you a lot of the city, but yet it gives you an opportunity to experience um, kind of a natural world. Because the grass and the, the vegetation is growing up around the river, it gives you the impression that you're not actually in the city, but you're right in the middle of the city. We're gonna keep moving on down, guys. We're gonna keep moving. Let's try to make it. This is the first time I've been in a kayak. Oh, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Yes, this is the first time I've uh, kayaked. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm always down to do new things. Pretty fun. <laughs> that was cool. Come on. Yeah. I have not paddled this. This is my first time on this river. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun, actually. The little shoots that were going down. <gasps> you get stuck every now and then. Make sure not to try to hit the side. Okay. Oh! There we go. We moving again. And then when you get down, it's like, whew, we made it. <laughs> it's pretty fun, like, riding down the water and going down the chutes. The chutes were, like, the best part, I thought. We did it! Woo! Yeah, it was just a really great experience just going down the river. I couldn't even tell that I was in the city because I see houses on the side and things like that, but it was completely silent. You could hear the birds chirping, the ducks quacking and everything like that. Yeah, buddy. Because I live in the city and I just always see how chaotic it is and everything is just so loud and noisy. And it's just good to connect with nature and just be peaceful and just relax and take everything in. Well, that was good, boy. Right, that was the best one yet. It's vitally important. If we are ever going to capture and rekindle our youth um, with the natural world, um, we've got to be able to make it accessible. Oh, my God. It's a pure environment, and that's what we're trying to get the kids to hopefully reconnect with. This is floating. This takes you to a different place. DFW area has about six million people in it, so uh, it's nice to be able to get out to an area like the Trinity. So you can feel like you're out in nature and having a great time. It's pretty easy. I've never paddled for a long extended length, and now I'm, I'm just like pumped and ready to go. Excited. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see what we do. Here we go. Opa. Woo! Ha ha, yeah. There are just a couple of spots on the river uh, where it gains some speed. Nice and easy breezy. But for the most part, anybody could come out and enjoy paddling on the Trinity. I have a little motto. If you're feeling uh, a little down or things aren't going great, 
The river will make you well. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh man, am I wet! Woo <laughs> Somebody is having fun. I'm wearing water. I heard a Yahoo! <laughs> You'll want to have a nice, quiet experience, and the, and the Trinity is a, is a place you can usually find that. It's a really a calm, easy paddle, flat water. It gives you a place to go paddling without having to drive long distances. It's our hometown river. It's what we got. So we need to embrace it, enjoy it, and I love it. Cattle Lake is unique because it is the largest bald cypress swamp in the south, if not in the United States. Paddling trails here on Cattle Lake will get you back into some habitat that is just not everywhere. It's, it's unique. It gets you into a place that you may have never seen before. Five trails here on Cata Lake. We have Hell's Half Acre, Carter Chute Trail, the Cathedral Trail, Turtle Shell Trail, and the Old Folks Playground Trail. Okie dokie. To get the people out here and to experience that uniqueness, the trails really help us do that. Really get to experience the surroundings and the sounds. Right over the, the green stuff there, you can just see his head. There's a great white egret over there. I've lived in Marshall most of my life, which is, uh, uh, I'm almost 70 years old. What's interesting, I guess, is, is the, the age and the beauty of the, of the cypress trees and the Spanish moss. It has an, kind of an ethereal feel to it. You can't really, experience cattle unless you get out on it. I think everything about it is unique. <laughs> you can't find this, well, really anywhere else. All the network of canals and the, the swampiness of it and the way it, it attracts the birds. I just feel real close to the earth when I'm here. Cata Lake is different every season. You can't just come one season and see it all. It is different every day. You got to get out on the boat, you got to get in the swamp, and you really got to sit down and you got to sit and listen. It's beyond words to describe how wonderful this place is. It's just unreal.
We are in Mule Slough in the back bay system of Port O'Connor, Texas. This is an isolated flat and it is surrounded by black mangrove and cord grass. I've lived here my whole life and I've, I've kayaked before, but um, just not here. This is my backyard. My backyard's always been outdoors for everything. And you get to sit in a kayak and you can see pelicans, seagulls, herons, everything. You get to see it all. Being out here in the water definitely calms me down. It's a um, just relaxing. Being back here in the water kind of brings me back down to earth because this place is home. I like how you can get into the, the smaller spots without making a whole lot of noise. Where there's nobody is pretty awesome. Look for redfish. So the Port O'Connor Paddling Trail is unique in the way that it's probably the most vast one on the Texas coast that's easily accessible. There's over 40 miles total of paddle trail. Hey Jade, look at that loon. That is just <laughs> a camera ready loon. He's getting his 15 minutes in. It is an adventure almost every time you come because you can get lost and that's okay. Uh, you can go into these secret bayous that no one knew existed that are mostly only accessible by a kayaker. This kayaking is a whole other experience and it's you and the water and nothing else. I mean, the saying goes, once you visit here once, you always come back a second time. You know, Port O'Connor has a way of bringing you back. It's a great place to be. Every year, Texas Parks and Wildlife adds more trails to the Paddling Trail program. So find one that fits your style and get on the water. Thanks for watching. We're on the Goliad Paddling Trail on the San Antonio River. It's uh, up a little bit, kind of fast compared to what it usually is, but nice. A little green out here. Ah, uh, it's a little green. A lot of Katie dids. This is a wide river, it really is. It's about 6.1 miles of uh, beautiful, pristine river. Better than schoolwork. Yeah, I'm glad we're out of school for summer. What I like about here is the scenery, the nature, all the birds and stuff. And this uh, river's real calm. Good place just to sit out and hang out and canoe. It's a coastal stream, so it has muddy banks. Grass and trees grow right down to the bank. You usually see a lot of wildlife because of that. 
Lots of trees. Water. Water. It's good for families. You don't have to be a skilled canoeist or a kayaker in order to enjoy the river. Right now we're just drifting, we're floating on the current. Uh, I go out here every so often. I like the river, but this is the first time I've been like solo kayaking. It's always pretty out here. The six and a half mile current trail I can make in an hour and a half. Most people take a little over two hours. And we will go pretty close to downtown Goliad, a couple blocks from the courthouse, and you wouldn't know you were near a town. You hear crickets and cicadas and birds, but uh, nothing that sounds like humans. It's a nice, friendly river. <laughs> 